So we had some bipartisan politics in December of 2019. The SECURE Act was passed and went into effect January 1st of 2020. So well, what does that mean to you? I, I think we should first start with required minimum distributions. Good news is they were pushed back from age 70 and a half to age 72. Now, if you turn 70 and a half prior to 2020, sorry, you still have to take your required minimum distributions. If you turn 70 and a half after January 1st of this year, you get to wait until the year in which you turn age 72. Um, the catch, however, is that they eliminated the stretch provision on inherited IRAs. What this means is essentially, if your kids inherited your IRA money, they used to be allowed to have to take a small required minimum distribution based upon their life expectancy. Okay, well now, instead of using life expectancy, they reduce that window to a 10 year period. So example, you pass away in your 80s, your kids inherit the money in their 50s, um, and if, you know, if it's a significant amount of money, you've got a 10 year window of which you need to take distributions out. Um, this is probably gonna hit folks um, when they're in their highest income earning years. Uh, I think the government and you know folks in Congress know this. This is there's been some tax revenue estimates I've seen about 15.7 billion dollars in tax revenue over the next 10 years uh, due to the Secure Act. So a little bit of a tax grab here. Um, so something to keep an eye on. Um, some other components I think small business owners are going to want to understand. Um, how the Secure Act affects multiple employer plans or what they call MEPs. Um, so essentially what they did is they reduced the fiduciary obligations of plan providers um, to really encourage small business owners um, and small businesses, excuse me, to pool together their plans um, into one, one overarching plan. What this does is the more assets in the plan, the lower the operating and administrative costs tend to be. So they're trying to encourage small businesses to implement plans so that more workers are covered by retirement plans in an age where pensions are few and far between. Now, you know, the pessimists would say, well, we already have simple IRAs and SEP IRAs um, out there now that are relatively easy to implement for small businesses. So uh, we'll kind of see how MEPs end up playing a role and see if uh, they really start to gain traction or not. Um, another unique point of the law is you're allowed to fund a deductible IRA now as long as you have earned income um, past the age of 70 and a half. Okay, so if you're working and you're 72, 73, 74, 75, you can fund a deductible IRA. Um, you know, get the tax deduction and put the money aside. Uh, so that's kind of neat. Um, also, qualified charitable distributions for those of you that are charitably inclined. Um, you do not have to wait until 72 to start taking or utilizing QCDs, as they call them. You're allowed still at age 70 and a half to utilize qualified charitable distributions out of a, an IRA. Um, there's some other components of the law that we'll see. Um, we'll have to see how they play out over time, such as annuities being added to 401k plans. So I think time will tell on some of the components of the SECURE Act. So we'll probably provide another update here at the end of 2020 to see how it's affecting us moving forward. The Cautious Investor with Ryan Glenn is sponsored by W3 Wealth Management.